Hello, my name's Eric, and welcome to the Big Man's Outdoors. I'm um, going to follow up a video I did shooting the Sierra 90 grain Match Kings, uh, where I didn't get good chronograph readings on most of my strings, and go out and shoot them again, and be very specific to try and get velocities for them. The other thing that I'm doing is I was starting to run low on Reloader 17, so I went to my local gun shop to get some more powder, and they had Reloader 16. So I picked up some of that. Uh, I've heard through the grapevine that Reloader 16 has a little bit better performance than Reloader 17, and I wanted to give it a try. I could not find any load data for the Reloader 16 for the 224 Valkyrie, which is what I'm shooting and what I'm reloading, if I haven't said that already. Uh, so, I compared Reloader 17 and Reloader 16 charge data for various other calibers, and they were similar. I know you can't do a one-for-one -one, uh, comparison between powders and just switch load data, but <clears throat> excuse me, they were similar enough that I think I feel comfortable uh, starting a little bit low and working my way up, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, so. I am shooting Federal uh, Once Fired Brass, I am using Winchester Small Rifle Primers, and I've got three sets of five loaded up with Reloader 16 at 26.1, 26.4, and 26.8. I believe the max charge for the Sierra uh, 90 grains based on the Sierra load data is 27 grains, so I'm getting close to what their max is for the Reloader 17. I'm definitely going to pay attention to um, the brass and make sure there's no pressure signs as I'm shooting it. And then I've got uh, two sets of five loaded up with H4350. And for those, I have 26.4 and 26.8. And I want to see what my velocities are for for all these rounds. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is start paying attention to the brass. Uh, I haven't necessarily been keeping track of how many times I've been shooting the brass, but uh, it's a big concern with the 224 about the primer pockets getting expanded too large. So I'm going to start paying attention to that and probably start using the same brass over and over again just to see how far this federal brass will go. It's definitely been shot once. I don't think these have been shot more than once. Uh, there's a slight chance that could have happened, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just going to assume that they were once, and we'll go from there. Uh, I guess we'll have a public service announcement <laughs> brought to you my, by my stupidity. Um, I My first string, I only have four rounds loaded up for because I assumed that the last time I reloaded the 224 I had reloaded the 90 grain Sierra Match Kings and that is not the case. Um, I had reloaded the 75 grain uh, Hornady Match Bullets for my 224 last so I had my seating depth uh, considerably less. These are loaded up to an overall length of 2.30 inches with a base to O jive of 1.80 because that's what my rifle seems to like for this particular bullet. Uh, when I ran this one through, my seating die was way too short. Um, my 75 grains bullets, uh, I seat them to an overall length of less than 2.26 inches. So this guy when I ran it through, I heard the powder compressing, and I thought to myself, boy, that's not right. So I pulled it out and took a look, and of course, its overall length, I think, is, let's take a look and see. It is at 2.24 inches, which obviously is short. So I may start a uh, box of shame and throw some ammo in there and just a reminder of uh, things not to do while you are reloading, uh, assumptions to not make. 
The other thing I want to do briefly before I start shooting is uh, take a look at my rifle. So I'm going to get that set up and we'll just go over the rifle specs real quick and we'll go from there. Alright, I want to take a quick moment and talk a little bit about my rifle. Uh, it is open, the bolt's back, there's no uh, magazine and it is clear. I made sure of that before I put it up on here. Um, this upper is one I got from AR-15 part. Uh, it was a completed upper. It came with obviously the upper, uh, the barrel, which is a 24 inch barrel, one and seven twist. It has a competition uh, muzzle brake on. That's what came with the barrel. Uh, it did come with a different hand guard. I put, uh, ended up putting an adjustable gas block on it. Uh, so I switched out hand guards at that point. I got the, the hand guard from Acme Machine. Uh, the scope is also from Acme Machine. It is a 6x24 MOA scope. Uh, the lower itself is, was just a stripped lower. It's an Anderson uh, yeah, Anderson manufacturing strip lower that I got from a local gun shop. Um, just a regular mill spec. Lower parts kit I put on it. Uh, I did put anti-walk pins in it. Uh, and a a uh, mil spec rifle length buffer tube with uh, Luth AR stock on it. So, um, nothing really special about it, I guess. Uh, just one I bought mostly in pieces and put together. So, like I said, just wanted to give you some specs. Again, 1 and 7 inch twist, 24 inch barrel. Uh, got it from AR 15 part. Alright, we are back from the range. Uh, this was an experiment with the Reloader 16. Sometimes experiments don't go well, sometimes experiments do go well. I think today's experiment went very well. I was able to get chronograph readings on four of the five groups. Unfortunately, in the last group with the H4350, I messed that up somehow. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happened or what, what the results are. So the top three groups are with the Reloader 16. The bottom two are with the H4350. My load data again was 26.1 grains of Reloader 16, 26.4 grains of Reloader 16, 26.8 grains of Reloader 16. And then for the H4350, I shot 26.4 grains and 26.8 grains. So looking at the results, my first group uh, shot four. I had a 0.93 inch group, 0.89 MOA. I had a uh, velocity which I was using my 
beta model crony uh, to measure my velocities at the muzzle. So I had a low of 2660, a high of 2703, an average of 2680, an extreme spread of 42.78, and a standard deviation of 18.89. Uh, I know this might be a little hard to read. Um, Fortunately, I was out of poster board, so I couldn't make a different target. I just used what I had. So, uh, I do apologize for everything that's going on here. My second group with the 26.4 grains of Reloader 16, I had a .76 inch group, .72 MOA. I had a low of 2703, a high of 2715, uh, average of 2709. Extreme spread of 10.92 and a st standard deviation of 4.12. And for the 26.8 grains of Reloader 16, I had a 0.75 inch group, 0.72 MOA. My velocities were a low of 2742, a high of 2759, an average of 2755 an extreme spread of 17.51 and a standard deviation of 7.21 so all three of these groups with the Reloader 16 are up around the velocities that Sierra or that uh, Federal advertises with their Sierra Match King bullets and comparing to what I got with the Reloader 17 when I shot it, the one group I did get on uh, the chronograph, my velocity numbers are a little bit better. Um, I averaged on the Reloader 17 2690 and I averaged on the Reloader 16 2755 so my velocities were about what 65 feet per second faster and I got a better group out of the Reloader 16 than I got out of the Reloader 17. Um, my Reloader 17 groups, none of them were sub-MOA, but my Reloader 16 groups, all of them were sub-MOA. So you can take that for what it's worth. It just looks like uh, it's performing a little bit better. Now moving on to the H4350. Uh, my first group that I shot was 26.4 grains of powder. I had a 0.96 inch group, 0.92 MOA. I had a low of 26.45, a high of 26.73, an average of 26.60, an extreme spread of 28.05, and a standard deviation of 13.15. Now this last group I shot with H4350, I... Uh, don't know what happened here other than I must have been aiming at this uh, point and not the bullseye. I, In my quote-unquote limited experience of shooting the H4350, I haven't had a flyer. So that's the only thing I can think of. And if you, In the video, this is my first shot and then these are my remaining four. So I am assuming that I messed that up and just was uh, not paying attention and, you know, shooter air. Uh, all five of those, aver or not average, but gave me a group of 1.52 inches, 1.45 MOA. But if I look at those four, 0.6 inch, 0.57 MOA. Again, I use the free app range uh, buddy to measure my groups. So that's where that information came from. But just looking at this, uh, you know, as a whole every one of these groups minus my mess up which I will attribute that to were sub MOA uh, again I'm shooting a one and seven inch one and seven yeah one and seven twist barrel on a 24 one and seven twist on a 24 inch barrel so all in all I'm extremely happy with the results I'm getting with both of these powders both of them are again up around 27 100 feet per second, which is where they should be based on the Sierra load data. Uh, the results are there. I think it's it's great. I'm very, very happy with what I'm seeing here. 
I've only got one more bullet in my box of 90 grain match kings until my next shipment arrives. I did order more of these and some 95 grain Sierra match kings. So I'm excited to shoot the 95 grains to see if I can get 95 grain Sierra match kings to see if I can get similar results as to what I'm seeing here. Uh, again, just all in all, very happy with what I'm seeing. So take this information from what it's, for what it's worth. It's just the information that I am putting out there, the, the results that I'm getting with what I'm doing with my rifle. The one thing that I didn't talk about in my results uh, video that I was making was the state of the brass. Um, I did recover uh, the brass. This is the Reloader 16 here. Uh, the lower charge is 26.1, working my way up to the 26.8. <coughs> Excuse me, and this is the H350. Um, the brass itself. Uh, there are some ejector marks in it, but I guess swipes. But it's not really anything that I would say that I haven't seen with some of the other loads that I've been getting, including the factory loads from uh, from Federal. Um, especially in the 90 grain match kings when I shot those. Unfortunately I don't think I have any. Um, here's one that I had previously shot before. I don't know if you can see that, but there are a couple marks in it. Um, so I don't think it's uh, any worse on brass than anything I've shot before so I uh, just wanted to take a moment and show that brass so until next time I appreciate you watching this is the big man's outdoors have fun outside